Hello, it's Friday evening once again. Welcome to the ABF online talk. Thank you for joining us on Zoom on, and on Facebook Live. Tonight, we take you to Central America, to a country known for its colorful culture, Guatemala. Our speaker tonight is Senor Minor Ovando of Birding Expeditions. He is a, is a licensed cultural tour guide and also a bird guide. Uh, buenos dias, sen Senor Minor. How are you? Fine, fine, Mike. And thanks for the opportunity. To learn about Guatemala. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. We're definitely so, ready. And gentlemen, Senor Minor Ovando. Okay. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm start to to share my presentation. Okay, so we're going to talk to the, today uh, as for Guatemala as a birding and culture destination. Um, our company, Birding Expedition, is a Guatemala tour company and it was created to merge you in an unforgettable experience of wilderness and natural beauty of the Neotropic. Our company is based in Guatemala. We also organize tours in Belize, in Honduras, and Salvador, Mexico. And the whole idea is to provide you with the richest and the most rewarding experience of the Mayan world. My name is Maynard Obando. Uh, I'm a licensed guide. My registration number in the Guatemala Tourism Board is 1634. Uh, and I have a certification as a specialist birding guide and also a certification as a cultural guide. Uh, I've been birding in the region for 16 years. And I have uh, 10 years of experience as a professional full-time birding guy. Uh, this gave me the opportunity to be selected by the National Law Society from the United States, which is the largest organization uh, that works for the bird conservation, to be the instructor of the birding guides training program around Lake Atitla. Uh, in the first stage, I worked to train 45 local guides from the Mayan communities. And in the second stage, I travel all around the country with these 15 more talented people to become birding guides in all the country. Uh, this is one of the more rewarding experiences I ever had. And it's been a great opportunity to create a network of local guides that are constantly monitoring the birds that birders want to see and find the best location to ensure the best chances to see the birds and then to get the, easy, the places where there is the easy access for our friends that come for birding. Uh, as a true company, we, we work close with the communities and the, most of the times local guys are joining us and that's the way that we can help with the local economy. So properly about the country, Guatemala is a natural bridge between two continents, North and South America. And uh, the country is the northernmost in the country in Central America. We have borders with Mexico and the western northern part of the country. Uh, on the east, we have, uh, uh, we are uh, neighbors with Belize, with Honduras, with El Salvador, and we have access to the Caribbean Sea. And the whole south part of the country is covered with shores in the Pacific Ocean. Guatemala can be easily divided in, in four areas. So the first one is the North Central American Pacific Slope, this orange area here in the map. Um, according to, this is a, an endemic area according to BirdLife International, and it's limited by the ocean and the volcanic chain. So here, in this edge, there are 33 volcanoes that uh, are aligned in front of the ocean, like a big wall, and it traps most of the humidity and creates lush forested areas where many of them can be found. There are some places around here where you can get 6,000 6, millimeters of rain in a regular year. 
Um, the next area is this green area here is the North, the North Central American Highlands. Uh, that covers 40% of the territory and it constituted of mountains and valleys that act like biodiversity reservoirs. Uh, the average altitude is 1,500 meters above sea level and this means that we have dry, cool weather most of the time. The average rain in this part of the country is about 1,500 millimeters in a year. Um, the, third, uh, the third area here in this green light color is the North Central American Caribbean slope. It's just a small bit of the country, uh, but it represents another limit distribution of so birds. Uh, for example, this is the last area where people can find uh, in the northern part of the, in Central America, birds like olivaceous piculate or gray-handed pipeheads or the kilbit mudmuck. And uh, the rest of the country is properly part of the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, this is a limestone plateau that used to be the bottom of the ocean 14 million years ago. Uh, and the average of the elevation is 200 meters. So it's, it's essentially flat. And uh, here is located the Mayan Biosphere Reserve, which is the, the, the largest uh, forest reserve in the country. All this part here that is uh, bordered with Mexican Belize is under conservation. Um, as a tropical country, we have two, two weather seasons. The dry season from November to April, and the rainy season uh, from, my, from May to October. And uh, this is directly related to migration. So the, the Nearctic birds uh, migrate, uh, comes on, on the fall migration, and all the birds that winters in the country uh, stays during the dry season here in, in Guatemala and in Central America. And um, the spring migration send all the birds to North America and uh, by the rainy season is the breeding season for the, for the native uh, uh, birds that we have in the country. Well, Guatemala is a small country. Yeah, but for example, Taiwan fits three times in our territory. We have a population of 16.6 .6 million people uh, and 30% of them are Mayan descendants who still speak 22 indigenous languages. Uh, the economy in the country is based most on agriculture. Uh, for example, the most important industry is sugarcane production. Uh, even though the country is famous as a major shade grand coffee producer. And the tourism is the second largest industry. The, uh, the official currency is Quetzal and the rate of exchange uh, with the dollars is about 7.5 uh, Quetzales per dollar. So why to come to Guatemala for birds? Well, the country is one of the 20 mega diverse countries in the world. We have seven major ecosystems. We have recorded properly 750 bird species and uh, 150 original endemics to Southern Mexico and Central America. And seven of them are endemics to Chiapas and Guatemala. Chiapas is the Southern state uh, from Mexico. Due to the well-established tourism industry, it's easy to have access to a varied habitat zones near to great lodges, some of them in incredible scenery locations. So for example, this is just uh, uh, an upper view of the Guacamaya Biological Station. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an area that is in the northern part of the country. And this is a really, really nice place. So you can see it's in the middle of the, of, the, of the Mayan Biosphere Reserve, but it's really well, really well done. It's, it's designed perfectly for people who are looking for nature. Guatemala has 30% of its territory in the subcategory of protected land, like national parks, wildlife refuge, or private nature reserve. And those private nature reserve uh, it's special because uh, allows us to provide private access to, to our guests to protect the areas. So right now with the, with the guidelines of this uh, COVID-19 situation that is uh, affecting everywhere in the world, 
we have we can offer safe places for birders uh, with no packed places. So essentially, it's it's, uh, it's private groups that comes specifically for dates, and we have the whole place for ourselves. Besides nature, uh, cultural experiences are highlighted when you visit the country. So colorful fabrics, fresh and traditional cuisine, great lodges and accommodations, and warm and welcoming people in every place to visit. So as a local tour operator, we work directly with our local guides and the experience and knowledge allow us to pick the best birding destinations in Guatemala. There are more than 60 birding spots, but here I will show you just the top 10. Uh, in the same sequence of a 15 day birding tour that covers most important areas of the country. So here, in the, here is the whole country and uh, I'm going to show you, uh, for example, here in the Central Highlands is Antigua, then is Tecpan, then in the northwest part of the country is Huetenango, uh, coming down a little uh, in the south is Quetzaltenango, the next destination should be Los Tarrales, then Lake Atitlan. Then we leave the highlands and we go into the eastern part of the country for the dry westward forest, then visit the central highlands for the resplendent Quetzal National Park, and then we move in a flight of about an hour to get into Tikal National Park. And finally, we usually finish in the Guacamayas Biological Station. So let's check one by one. We're gonna start with Antigua Guatemala. Yeah. And uh, this was the, the capital, the colonial capital city of Central America from 1543 to 1776. Its Baroque architecture is so well conserved that it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979 because of the culture. It's just one hour ride from the airport and it's the place where we spend the first two nights in the country. There are three volcanoes surrounding the city. The Fuego Volcano is an active one, as you can see here in this picture, and depending on the weather, you can see it from the terrace at your hotel at night. The city is nice and quiet, full of nice hotels and fine restaurants, which offers Guatemalan specialties as well as international food. But we are here for the birds, right? So some of the attractive birds that can be found in the nice trails of nature private reserves just 10 minutes from the main plaza are, for example, proof of saber wing, or green throated mountain gems. Those are uh, hummingbirds that are related and endemic to the northern part of Central America. Uh, another interesting birds are here are the blue throated mudmud or the bushy crested jay. Traveling, uh, um, we will find that the pan is a place that we visit on the way to the countryside. And this is an area covered with pine forest and an elevation of 2000 meters uh, that is important in history because this is the last post plastic mine city. And this is the house of the near endemic pink headed warbler. Uh, this is one of the seven birds shared just with the southern Mexican state of Chiapas. This is probably one of the most stunning birds that we have in the country. It's a very unique bird. But besides of this, we can find the uh, yellow junco, a crescent chested warbler. You will find that uh, most of the birds that can be found in the country are more are like to be more like uh, the North American, uh, the North American species. The more of the families are more like North American. 65% of the birds are more like North American and 35 are more like South American birds. So, Huehuetenango is the best kept secret of the biodiversity in Central America. It's a Paramo Plateau about 3,200 meters in elevation, and it's the perfect place to see how nature works. 
many endemic species of plants, mammals, reptiles, and birds are found in this particular habitat. And here, the Goldman's warbler is the big star. It's a true endemic from this tiny country, uh, the corner of the world. Uh, we, we have this, uh, this is our uh, endemic bird in the country. It's just related to the high, higher mountains in, in the northwestern part of the country. And uh, according to, to the local uh, ornithological authority, the AOS, this is just one of the subspecies of the yellow uh, rumble warbler uh, group. But the IUC uh, considered that this is a full species. So that's why we have the, the name of Goldman's warbler. Um, it's, 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 it's a very, very uh, interesting bird. Uh, as I mentioned, this, this area where this bird lives is a paramo. So most of the trees are really, really short. So the color, the, 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 the song that they, they use, even the behavior to feed, because most of the time they are so short that they need to come to the ground and looking uh, for insect in the grass. So looking for a North American warbler, I mean, this kind of behavior is, is completely uh, different. It's amazing. So that's, that's the big star around here. But there are some more interesting birds. Uh, there's a zoo species uh, uh, of the savanna sparrow or the Guatemalan flicker that are very easy to find in these areas. Uh, another bird that is one of the seven uh, related just to Mexico and Guatemala is the black up siskin. And this is a good place where we can uh, uh, find the enigmatic unspotted savage owl. Buenos dias. Continue with the different places. Quetzaltenango. Uh, uh, is uh, probably the best place in Guatemala to find high altitude specialties. Uh, there's a good number of mountain specialties can be found without, without a strenuous hike. There are flat and comfortable pathways by the side of the parking lot at an altitude 2,400 meters that give birders real opportunity to find birds like hooded crossbeak and golden brown warbler or tunicolor jay, or the tiny wine throated hummingbird. This is the second tiny bird in the world. It's just the bee hummingbird from Cuba. This is smaller than this. So this, this is the perfect place for look for these uh, specialties. And as I mentioned, this is a place where you can get in the car by the parking lot and you immediately start to see all these specialties. In many, many areas, in Chiapas or even in Honduras, uh, you need to make a, a really big and strenuous hike. Uh, but this is a very comfortable place. Yeah. Then we move to Los Tarrales, which is a private nature reserve uh, that is an authentic paradise for birding. It was the first private nature reserve in Guatemala and it was intended for birding. Uh, they have nice trails, food beaters, feeders for birds. They have great food and local shade ground coffee. And uh, it's just what you need beside the birds when you're in a place like this. So it's nested in the southern slope of the Atitlan volcano. Uh, and the property started with an elevation 600 meters. And the, the last corner of the property is 3,000 meters in elevation just on the top of the volcano. So they have recorded more than 350 bird species in an area of say, six square kilometers. Essentially, every time that you look in a different direction, you get a new bird. Uh, some of these unique birds from this side of the country are the white-bellied chachalaca or the yellow nape parrot. And one of the big stars here, the Ashur rum tanager. This is another one of the seven that can be found just in Chiapas in Guatemala. And uh, this particularly has a very restricted uh, uh, area of distribution. So 
in altitude is from 800 meters in elevation to 1500 meters and it's just from southern Mexico to central Guatemala. So it's just a very narrow stripe of land, uh, particularly in the, in the foothills in the Pacific area. Um, and that's, it's a, it's a very, very unique, and we are lucky that in places like Los Terrales, it's locally common. So coming to Los Terrales is, is uh, the best place to see this kind of bird. Or for example, the rufous breast of the spine tail. Thirty minutes from Los Tarrales is located at Lake Atitla. That is an incredible location with the scenery of three volcanoes keeping guard of the deepest lake in Central America. Twelve villages nested around the lake show how the Mayan people are keeping their local customs and traditions. And around here, some of the birds can be found in the mountains are, for example, the mythical horn one. This is the holy grail of the birds in Central America. This is a grassy, like a turkey sized bird uh, that lives just at the top of the mountains, uh, essentially in the, in, in the top of the volcanoes. Um, uh, and and it's, it is probably the bird that most people really want to see when they come to the country. So it's a very threatened bird. There are an estimation of just 2,000 individuals in nature, uh, but fortunately, 60% of those are living here in the country. But there's some nice birds like the Lander Sheertail, or another the specialties of the belt of flycatcher, and another member of the uh, seven birds uh, group, or the white faced garden sparrow. Well, leaving the highlands, then we can go to different areas like the eastern part of the country. And uh, the dry scrub forest is a unique habitat in Guatemala. It's flanked by the Sierra de las Minas uh, in the northern part uh, and Sierra Madre in the southern part. So, so this uh, this is the Motagua Valley, and this is the driest place in Central America. So there's, there's an average of rain in a place like this, of just 600 millimeters in a year. And it makes this place a hot, a hot spot for endemism. So several species of cacti, bromeliads, and reptiles are found only in this valley, like the Guatemalan bedded lizard. Uh, a venomous lizard close related to the Gillen monster. Uh, but the birds related to this area is, for example, the lesser grand cuckoo or the yellow grosbeak. Uh, this is a, a very particular species because the yellow grosbeak in the northern part of, of Mexico uh, is, is, is really yellow, but the sort of species here is, is, is orange. And birds like with white lord nutcatcher or the rusted crown mudmud. Uh, Mudmuds are a very interesting family of birds, and Guatemala is the country with more species of mudmuds in Latin America. We have seven species here from the nine that you can find along the neotropics. And then just an hour from, from this very, very dry place we find the resplendent Quetzal National Park, uh, the Quetzal Biotope, that is uh, part of the Sierra de las Minas Biosphere Reserve. Uh, and, this, uh, and this reserve is 11,000 square kilometers, which made the largest cloud forest in Central America. This is one of the places to admire our national bird, the resplendent Quetzal, an authentic icon in the Mayan cosmovision and a symbol of the nation. Our currency is named Quetzal after this bird. And uh, it, it comes in, in, in our currency, in the, in the bills and even in the coins. Every single coin or every single beer, bird, uh, bill has uh, the bird uh, printed on it. Uh, but there are some special birds like the spotted nightingale thrush or the chestnut headed or pendulum. And then 
moving northern to the country, uh, we can see that Guatemala is well known all over the world as a cradle of the Mayan civilization. The northern part of the country uh, keeps some of the most important ancient Mayan cities. And Tikal National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in two categories, nature and culture. Uh, this, is, this is the largest Mayan city and one of the most important in the classic times. Um, they have structures about 70 meters high that allows people to look for birds above the canopy of the Mayan Biosphere Reserve. So walking through the different uh, trails, you can enjoy some mammals uh, like this white most coati, but you can see really impressive birds like the orange breasted falcon. This is the rarest raptor in the Neotropics. And we are lucky to have at least a couple that is nesting regularly in the top of the temples of the main plaza. So we just have the, not just have the opportunity to see it, but get close enough in order to take picture like this. Um, but there are some other birds like this crested one or this lady tail trogon, or very colorful and nice bird like the Kill Bill Chucan. It's a, a, the perfect symbol of the tropics in, in America. Or the oscillated turkey. This is a bird that is uh, endemic to the Yucatan Peninsula. So it can be found just in Yucatan, in Guatemala and Belize, or the pale bill woodpecker. And uh, no visit is complete in the northern lowlands without spending some time in the largest wetlands in Central America. Las Guacamayas Biological Station is an amazingly comfortable jungle lodge where birds are just one of the good reasons to stay. You will find how this place is run by local people uh, that it's properly trained to give you a top service that you really couldn't imagine that you can get in a place like this. Completely isolated from towns or villages, you will discover a pristine forest that is the home of big birds like the birds tapir. But there are some more interesting mammals of the Yucatan black holler monkey or the Geofroys spider monkey. But this is a great place to find some distinctive birds, like the wedge-tailed saber wing. This is a hummingbird that is endemic to the Yucatan Peninsula. And again, it's just in this part of, of, of the country it can be found. Or the toddy mud mud, or the rusted nape wood rail, or the agami heron, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, for sure the most probably, uh, the most beautiful heron in the world. So certainly Guatemala will be a rewarding adventure. So we invite you to come and join us to discover a new world of birds for this part of Central America. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Amazing birds, amazing place. Too short, my Lord. <laughs> more, more. It's <laughs> just more, my Lord. <laughs> you can have like another. You have some questions. Very colorful, though. Okay, I guess there there'll be a, a, a ton of questions to ask you. So uh, please um, close your your uh, stop sharing now, please. Okay. Then we can see everybody. All right. Thank you. Wow, so many people here tonight. <laughs> 25. 25 people with us. We have friends from all over, from Asia, from Africa, from, yeah. Good. From Korea, from India. So um, talk about the, the, the field guy. What, 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 what's the best field guide you would recommend? Uh, well, there's a Peterson field guide for the Northern uh, Central America. 
So that covers the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras. Oh, okay. Excellent. And, and, and is it the latest edition? Like, uh, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's been uh, released a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the more updated one. And, and, and did you mentioned so many endemic species or regional endemics. Um, mm -hmm. How long does it take in the tour to see all these endemics or most of the endemics? Uh, yeah, us usually in a, in a 14 days tour, 14, 15 days, we can cover the whole country. Okay. Three, and uh, we see percent of endemics in, in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's the reason we I, I I show you the the ten places, the top ten places in this uh, in this order because that usually uh, what it takes fourteen days to visit in the country. Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have the the best the poor guy in Guatemala might know with us. So, uh, please ask him whatever you want to know about Guatemala. Maynard, uh, our friend Mark Ng of Malaysia is asking, how, what's the estimated budget for a 12-day tour? Okay, for a 12-day tour, we have... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's about uh, $3,400. 3400 Person. Yeah. Uh, but that includes everything. I mean, uh, ticket planes and uh, all, all the boat rides and all the entrance fee to the parks and all the accommodation and, and all the food. Uh, purified water is, is, is an all inclusive. Ticket, you mean uh, domestic flights? Yeah, usually, usually we, we need to take a domestic flight from the Central Highlands to the northern part of the country. Yeah. Because even the country is, is, is small in, in size, uh, going through the mountains in car, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you cannot get uh, as fast as you would like because of the topography. So it takes about 10 hours to, to drive from the Central Highlands to the northern part of the country. So it's much better uh, and, and you can uh, invest uh, if you take a one hour flight. Okay, excellent. Yeah, uh, Tom, you want to say something? Please unmute yourself. Tom? Yeah, unmute. Okay. Okay, can, can you hear me? Yes, please, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, please. Hi, Manor. It's a great presentation. Thank you. Uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, I remember the time uh, the the volcano is the, has the volcano quiet down now or still active? Well, the the volcano is active, but but not in the way that you experienced that time. Yeah. Uh, uh, all, rather, all the time I for us. Uh, I rather it is active, so it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the question uh, for the road runner, I think we saw road runner because there's a very rare, we never seen that in Asia. Is it uh, yeah. still common to see road runners in uh, Guatemala or that when the bird we seen that last time was it by accident or it's pretty common to see? No, it's, it's a common bird to see. Yeah, when when you when you get into the into the mountains in the driest places, uh, mostly where you can find a lot of uh, reptiles, uh, lizards properly or small uh, uh, small snakes, that's where the road runners are looking. Uh, road runners are the family of the of, of the cuckoo, the, the the American cuckoos, so they are very active uh, in in these areas where there is particularly dry. So the the, the volcanoes. Um, the dry scrub forest, that's the place where the road runners are, are coming to find. Okay. You know, I left my heart in uh, Guatemala. There are two <laughs> birds. Uh, I took a shot. I, I, I wasn't 
quite satisfied. One is the horned guan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another one is the wine throat the hummingbird. Uh, yes. So, they, what do you think the chances of seeing them again? I mean, is a pretty good opportunity to see them? Yes. For yes. One uh, one one of the reasons I I talk about our work with the communities is that we are every every time that we're coming. Uh, they, the, the local guides are telling us all the time, I'm, I'm, I'm finding a new place. So right now we have a couple of places where we can see, uh, or we can have more and more chances to see these birds in the closest range. Uh, and, but, but it's a particular time of the year. So January and February is, is probably the, the, the prime time to visit the country because very close. You, you, don't, you don't need to make this uh, strenuous hike that you did last time because they come to, to, to a place where it's more uh, easily to reach. Okay, wonderful. So uh, que question, uh, you know, I, I once see, uh, I forgot whether it's a National Geographic or Discovery. There was a very good one hour uh, story about Guatemala. Uh, do you know the one in, um, in, introduced your country? National Geographic, National Geographic, they have a, a good show of a, one hour of the country. Oh, okay. And, uh, the, the, last, the last year was, was released uh, from the uh, Animal Planet. Uh, uh, they 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 stay here for for a couple of months, and they shot uh, a, a, a documentary about nature in the Guatemala. It's, it's called uh, Wild Guatemala. Uh, it's part of the series for Central America and should be released in the Animal Planet, for example. Yeah, so the show I saw mm -hmm. they uh, they photographed very nicely about their horned uh, one. So <laughs> yeah, that that that's the one that you saw. Okay. Uh, Thank uh, you. A, a documentary about nature in the Guatemala is called uh, Wild Water. Okay. More questions to Minor. Uh, question. Minor's boss, Benedicto. Benedicto yes. is still there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tell me, please. Kusum okay. has a question. Kusum Fernando, uh, yeah, Kusum, please. Uh, hi, Mena. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, how many mammals can you see during the 14, 15 days of your tour? Uh, well, we can see about 12 or 15 mammals in the country. We we are not a country with big mammals. Uh, Usually are the monkeys, there are some foxes. Uh, time to time we are lucky enough to, to see some of the some of the five cats that we have in the country. So it's the jaguar, is the is the mountain lion, is the jaguar on the is the margay and the ocelot. So usually we can see one one of those five. Uh, but deers and king cajus. Uh, Coaris. Coari, yes. Uh, that's 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 usually the the mama that we can see. <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, it can be seen on the way during the birding tour. Yes. Yeah. Okay, usually okay. there are like like fifteen species that you can see. Yeah. And what is the big out of them? Uh, what is the biggest one? Uh, well, when yeah, when you visit, uh, for example, the the Laguna del Tigre National Park. That's that's the the best chances to see these these big mammals like the like the tapir, uh, uh -huh. like the big cats. That's that's the the only area in the country where we can see. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Hey, guys, we still have time. Yes, I, Andy, please. Yeah, I have, I have two questions. My first question is, you have about 750 species of bird. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me what about the density per species? How many per, per species? 
Well, we, we have a, we have a, uh, a really good, uh, well, healthy population of birds. Uh, usually in a, in a 14 days uh, bird trip, we can see it from 325 to 350 uh, species. So in the highlands, uh, we have, uh, uh, well, as, as everywhere in the world, in the mountains, there are not so many different uh, birds, but in the highlands, there's about 250 species that can be seen, but in the lowlands, it's the big numbers. So visiting the lowlands, you can get 100 species uh, a day, for example. So the birds that are in the migratory birds, there's about 250, and there's about 500 that are resident. So you visit, for example, in the, in the in the dry season that comes from October to April, you you can you can easily see uh, all this number like 350. If you come in the rain season, uh, there's just like 500 birds that can be seen. Um, the the good thing, for example, here in the in the rainy season, and uh, some had the experience to, to, to come in the country by June, that we were in the middle of the rainy season. Every single day during the morning is great for birding. Uh, our, our, our time for rain is usually in the afternoon. So by noon it's getting cloudy, and then we have some a couple of hours of showers uh, at the end of the day. So the next morning is great for birding again. So um, I, I, I would say that probably like 200, like 300 birds can be seen in the mountains and the rest can be seen easily in the, in the lowlands. What about the numbers per species? For example, you have the, the guan, the horn guan. How mm -hmm. many can we, we expect? Or are, there, are there many or just a few? Well, in 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 a, in a in a particular place where we're looking, we usually can see one or two. Uh, that that when we find the bird, because they are they are rare. As I mentioned, there is just like two thousand in nature, and sixty percent of them are are here in the country, but in the, in several places. So usually, again, most people come here by the by the dry season. So you can see just one or two. Uh, if you come by the rainy season we have chances to be, uh, to see uh, the family groups. So you can see six or five, uh, but this is in this particular time for the, for, for the breeding season. Usually you get chance to see one or two uh, when we are focusing on bird, because we need to go to particular places to try to find them. My last, question, my last question is yeah. the guan, the guan, eh, they are quite big birds. Eh? The guan, they are can big I, birds, you? right? Can they still size. fly? Or they are, are can they fly or they are, they are just ground birds? They walk on the ground like chicken. Oh, fly. Uh, they, they, are, they are boreal. It means they are living all the time in the, in the canopy. Mm -hmm. uh, they are properly, they are just like uh, gliding tree to tree. They are just jumping between trees. Uh, they are not properly flyers uh, because they are really, really big, like a, a turkey size. So they are not great, great flyers, uh, and they are mostly on, on, the, on the on the on the canopy. It's very rare they they can come to ground, but it's really really rare to see them on the ground. They when we are looking for them, they are looking in the in the canopy. What is their diet? Uh, they are related to per, uh, a particular group of, uh, of trees that are producing uh, some fruits. Uh, when we are looking for the bird, we're looking for this particular tree that locally is called kanak. And what we're looking is uh, the flowers because they're eating the stem. There's a lot of protein in the stem of the flower. So when you see the flowers on the ground, you know the bird is around. So they are looking for the fruit and the stem of this particular tree. But of course, they, they have access to insects and, and lizards, but mostly, again, it's related to this particular tree, the Kanak tree. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We have a question from Alain Austria of the Philippines. 
uh, he is an archaeologist and an amateur bird watcher. He is interested in Tikal. Uh, mm -hmm. How many days do visitors stay there? And how do you balance bird watching with Mayan archaeology, which are both very interesting? <laughs> Okay, we usually spend three days uh, around Tikal uh, because again, we, we try to, to, to do as much as possible. But Tikal is a really, really big park. So it's 25 kilometers by side. So the, the archaeological site is just in the middle of the park. So you, for example, you, when you get into the, into the park, you need to go into the main gate and there are 14 kilometers from the main gate to the archaeological site. So that, that's the reason it has two categories as UNESCO heritage site, because nature is so, so, so well in, in good state of conservation that is, it's a really great place to, to go birding. So usually in, in, on our regular tours, we start birding early in the morning. We spend a couple of hours looking for the specialties. We have breakfast and then we walk through the archeological site and usually we're having a, a, a second guy joining us because we're looking for the birds. We are uh, walking from the different uh, areas into the archeological site. So we are, we are traveling place to place. We're looking for the birds. We're trying to get as many birds as possible. And then when we get the structures, my, my, my colleagues, they're experts on archeology, span they're giving the, the proper explanations. Wow. Uh, you can imagine that most of the times in the middle of the explanation and if you see a, a, an eastern bird, interesting bird, we stop everything, we get the bird and then we, we get back here. But we can, we can spend a couple of days uh, visiting the main places and, and that, that's an, uh, an, a nice uh, balance between uh, birding and archaeology. There, there's a concept that we manage with Benedicta that is archaeobirding. That is wow. making birding in archaeological sites. So aside from Tikal, uh, are, are the other bird watching sites also has uh, opportunities for cultural watching? Yes, uh, as I mentioned that, for example, uh, going to Antigua, um, Antigua is a, a, a place full of uh, this uh, structure from the 1700s. So part of, uh, of, the, of the activities are having a, a short walk uh, in this uh, uh, history tour, because as I mentioned, it used to be the capital city of all Central America and the colony Guatemala was the whole, the whole Central America as a country. So there, there's a lot of interesting and historical places. Then when we visit places, like, for example, like the Pinhead and Warbler, this, uh, this city is from the post-classic times are located in the highlands. So we usually visit places like that. And again, all these archeological sites are inside of national parks. So it's under conservation and the forest areas are really good. So all the time that you visit an uh, archeology, uh, a place for archeology, span you know for sure that there are great opportunities for birding because all of them are uh, uh, protected land. Thank you. Yeah, just just in the northern part of the country, in Tikal, we have more than five thousand archaeological sites. So that's why the Mayan Biosphere Reserve is so big and is so well on uh, good state of conservation because uh, it's been protected for two reasons: for nature and and for the ecology. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, so so my lord, during a uh, rainy season, is it? The, the road muddy or it is paved? Yeah, most of the roads are paved. I I think the only place that we travel regularly that isn't paved is the is the Laguna del Tigre National Park. In places like this, even without the rainy season, we have some muddy areas because this is a wetland. So oh, in places yeah. like this, we are in a in a four by four. Uh, but we need to get into a place and then take a boat because again, in these wetlands, uh, the, the last hour is in a boat. So that's the only place that is really uh, muddy. The other places, as I mentioned, because of the tourism industry, 
uh, are really well paved uh, roads everywhere we visit. Thank you. All right. Uh, one question for Mark Ung, like, uh, what's the, when is the best time to go to Guatemala and how high does the temperature get in the lowlands? Okay. So in, in order to see as many birds as possible, the dry season is, is, is probably uh, the best. So from middle November to April, uh, it's it's a it's a good it's a good time. Um, probably, again, thinking about uh, the the what I would call the prime time because it has a good concentration of birds just bef before migration. It's uh, January and February. That's probably the the, the best time from the season. Uh, in December, particularly uh, for the for the holidays. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, well we have some problems sometimes with uh, with accommodation because there there is a there's the peak of the high season for the holidays but immediately in January uh, there are more space available so that's why those two months are particularly good for for birding uh, and then uh, in the lowlands uh, we start like uh, like 20 Celsius Two degrees, and by, by noon we would probably get into the 30, 32 Celsius degrees. Probably the thing with the temperature is not a big thing, but the humidity in the in the Yucatan Peninsula can be really high, 90, 95 percent. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Oh, we have a question from uh, Joseph of Rwanda. Joseph, uh, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Cannot hear you. Hi, Joseph. Yes, please unmute. Oops. Okay, let's go to Mahit first. Uh, okay. uh, yes. Joseph, are you ready? Okay, Joseph, yes, please. Yes, jo jo Joseph, now you're good to talk. Hello, Joseph. Uh, let's go to Mohit first. Right. Okay. I have a, I only have a small question. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued that you have archaeological sites and you have uh, forests for birds, which are managed very well together. If you can, if you have a case study or if you have any sort of document that states the importance of archaeological sites and birding together or bird habitats together. That'll be a lot of use to me because then I can show the document to some of the decision makers in our country where we need to protect both at the same time. So it's just a request whenever it happens. Okay. okay yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for this kind of document. Uh, I don't have in mind wine right now, but well, the most probable thing is that we have uh, uh, some documentation about it, uh, because again, the, the Guatemala it's, it's been uh, known more for the archaeology and the culture. So the parts were designed for for, for archaeology, and uh, during this time, uh, well, the archaeology has been famous in the country for the last 60, 70 years. During this time, people uh, started to notice how good was uh, the, the, the observation of nature in places like this. So I'm, I'm gonna try to get some, uh, some information like this and try to, to, to share with you. Thank you, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, my lord, you can send information to Asian Burfield email address that we can share with people. Okay, great. Okay, my right, lord, um, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Okay, during the 14 days trip, what's the general elevations range? Uh, general range, range probably it's about 1,000 to 1,500 meters in elevation because we spend more, more of the times in the mountains. Mm -hmm. So between 1,000 and what? 
1500. 1500. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just just the last three or four days, uh, we're in the lowlands, uh, but most of the time we are we are in the mountains in this range, from 1000 to 1500. Okay. It's a beautiful country for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joseph, are you ready to to ask a question? Joseph. Okay, he's silent. Maybe an audio problem. Okay, uh, any question? Yeah, the question on our uh, chat room. What are the vegetation of Guatemala? Uh, vegetation? Yeah. Okay, we, well, as, as you saw in the map, 40% of the, of the country are in the highlands, and most most of the, the forested areas in the highlands are pine and oak trees. Guatemala is the country with more pine species in the world. We have 17 different pine uh, uh, trees species. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, and and then in the in the lowlands, well, it's rainforest. There's a lot of palms. Um, and, well, this, this forested area has uh, an interesting mix, but we have really, really hardwood trees. Uh, all, these, uh, all these trees from the Zapotasia family, uh, that is this uh, chewing gum tree. Uh, we have uh, uh, tropis and we have mahogany trees. Um, the interest of many people in the, the 18th and the 17th centuries getting into Guatemala was getting into these areas and, and, and made lumbering on these special trees. Uh, but in the, in the, in the mountains, uh, most of the trees are, are more like uh, oak trees and pine trees. Thank you. And the, the second question is from, uh, from Joseph. Mm -hmm. that, uh, how many young birds are acting there compared to others. I don't really know okay. what his questions, but yeah, are there young birders? Are there many? Are they active? Oh, birders, uh, young birders. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a movement right now of, of uh, people from uh, probably 15 to 25 years old. These young, these young birders are really active and they're probably like, like 20, 25, Borders in that in that age, uh, there is a there is another uh, group of people that are photographers. Uh, they are probably like sixty or seventy. They are the, the largest number of birders because they are more interested in, in, in photography. Uh, and then people who are like me are are more like into into business. We are like twenty, so we we are not uh, a big number of birders in the country. Uh, but young people is getting more interested, uh, particularly in this uh, in this period of time, uh, because of the restrictions. A lot of young people is getting interested in birds because they've been forced to be at home and they are start to see in, in, in gardens, so they are start to putting attention on it. Thank you. Okay. Any more question? How is the COVID nineteen situation in the country right <laughs> now? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, um, we've been uh, we've been uh, well at, at the beginning. It was a very strong that's lockdown amazing. here in the country. Uh, and it in, in some way uh, worked really well because uh, at the beginning it gave the opportunity to the government to work in, the, in hospitals all over the country in order to be prepared to, to, to have facilities for people who are getting sick. Fortunately, the numbers of people that are getting assistance to all hospitals are really low. And uh, right now we're, we're being about a month and a half since everything is being open slowly. So uh, most of the activities are allowed in 50% uh, uh, occupation uh, in order to have the, the, the social distance. 
and uh, the, the airport is, is working in the last, uh, since mid-September. And uh, well, every, uh, by, uh, by law, you need to use, uh, you are forced to use a, a, a mask. So people are using it uh, and the numbers is been steady. A lot of people, probably like 600 people is getting uh, testing positive every day. But the number of people getting into hospitals are really, really low. So uh, I think is we're we're doing a, 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 a in a good way, and the economy is getting slowly getting back uh, in a steady way. So uh, I think the, the 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 best way to to try to to understand how we're doing is the number of people getting into the hospital. That is, uh, is is not is not as bad as I would expect in the beginning. So we we are probably. Uh, our hospital is working in 50% ratio. So I think we're, 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 good, we're doing a good way. Okay, thank you. So, uh, um, Guizera, are you? Oh, okay, yeah, please. Hello? Yes. You hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you, please. Okay. Uh, I thank you first for the good presentation. It's very really amazing and uh, attractive to everyone. Uh, so let me go to my question. Uh, I'm asking that uh, compared to young uh, and adult, who is active in Guatemala? Thank you. Who is? Uh... Sorry, I couldn't get the last part. Uh, who is active? Like adult and young, we, I, I would like to know who, who is active on the field of budding. Mm. Um, right now, people, people, young people is, is, is more active in the field right now. Uh, people, uh, young people is, is, uh, is, uh, is having more chances to go into, into the field and they are probably the more active birds right now in the, in the country. Um, uh, owls uh, again most of the most of the owl people who are interested in birds they are mostly to the photography so they are not looking for a particular bird they are not as active as uh, they could so young people is the, is the more active in the in the in the country for birds if you see for example eber eber is very popular here in the country uh the people who is all the time uploading their checklist uh is is the young people That's good, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, it's about time. Thank you, my Noah, for the great presentation. And it's my pleasure. Yeah, before we go, we have two things to do. The first one. Yeah. Excuse me, may, yeah, I have yeah. a, may I have a few seconds? Of course, Benedicto, please. Okay, hello everybody, hello Tom. Great to see Hi, you Benny. everybody. Uh, let me tell you a little bit uh, more about Guatemala. Guatemala is not just birds. This is the most colorful country in Central America. Why? We have uh, 23 different native groups. The food, custom, festivals are amazing, colorful completely. And during the, the birding tour, the birding itinerary, we pass through these communities. The food is excellent because beside birding, one of the most important things that the birders enjoy is food, lodging, and we have a great coffee too. Archaeology, somebody asked about, about archaeology. We have more than 3,000 archaeological sites open. And you, for example, in Tikal, while you be there, you can enjoy the whole history of the Mayans, how they interact with nature. Also, the local, still local people, they have a great connection with the local. And we can talk about conservation, archaeology, birding, and many other things. You will have a great time. We have a Tom Zoom in the, in the group. He was with us here. He had a great time. He's a, a great traveler, true, a great photographer. And, and the time he spent here is, is amazing. You can share with uh, him some questions. He's living in Taiwan. And, and you know, Guatemala is a great place. It's safe now. We get a, a certification of, uh, about COVID. And, and, and everybody is prepared to take care about you. We go to usually to safe areas, not only during this time, in the past too, because we visit the private reserve, natural parks, 
and and mostly the people look at uh, uh, other areas when the 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 people come for a cultural interest. We usually will be outside in a very remote and beautiful areas with a great lodging. Okay, we invite you to come to Guatemala and thank you everybody for, for having us with you. Okay. Thank you, Benny. Thank you. Now let's take a group photo, everyone. Okay, so um, turn, on address, yeah. turn on your camera, show your faces. I can see almost everybody. Okay, Mark. Toshin, Mark. Lisa, Holy, Pacific, Shaki. Holy Chan, Pacific. All right. Hello, Holy Chan. Well, anyway, yes. Please look at the camera. Don't move and smile. One, two, three. Thank you, everybody. And before we go, Mike. Where are we going next week? Oh, next week, uh, we're going to Rwanda with Francis Quisera. Wow, Francis, okay. Francis Excellent. Is, Francis is Excellent. here with us tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm here. Yes. <laughs> so see you next week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're great right. people, Rwanda. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, you. Bye -bye. Thank Bye. you, Benedicto, Manor. My pleasure. See you soon here. My pleasure. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Bye. Bye. Bye.